It was a sticky August afternoon in rural Arkansas. The sun had begun its descent, casting long shadows across the two-lane highway that cut through dense, humid forests. Emily, a recent college graduate, was driving home from a week-long camping trip in the Ozarks. The trip had been meant to clear her head, to offer some peace before she started her new job in the city. But as the miles wore on, the sense of tranquility she'd found in the woods began to erode. The road ahead was empty, with only the occasional rusted-out truck parked in a distant driveway. Her phone's GPS had rerouted her off the interstate due to construction, leading her down this forgotten back road. As the hours passed and the landscape remained stubbornly unchanged, Emily couldn't shake the feeling that she was lost. She hadn't seen another car in nearly an hour when the low fuel warning on her dashboard chimed. Great, she muttered, glancing at the gauge hovering just above empty. She'd hoped to avoid stopping until she reached the next town, but now it seemed unavoidable. Her eyes scanned the road for any sign of civilization. A few minutes later, she saw it. A small gas station nestled in a clearing, the kind of place that time forgot. The neon sign out front flickered weakly, spelling out Smith's Gas and Goods in pale blue light. The place looked deserted, but Emily had no other choice. She pulled into the station, her tires crunching over gravel. The pumps were ancient, and she doubted if they even worked. As she stepped out of the car, a wave of heat and humidity hit her, making her skin feel sticky under her t-shirt. Hello, she called out walking toward the small, dilapidated store attached to the station. The doorbell jangled as she pushed it open. The interior was dimly lit, the air inside heavy with the smell of old wood and something else she couldn't quite place. The shelves were sparsely stocked, mostly with dusty canned goods and faded postcards from the 1970s. Emily approached the counter, where a lone figure sat hunched over a newspaper. Excuse me she said, trying to sound casual. Is the pump out there working? The man behind the counter looked up slowly. His eyes were sunken with dark circles beneath them, and his skin had the waxy pallor of someone who hadn't seen sunlight in years. He smiled, revealing yellowed teeth. Sure is, he rasped. Just pay here first. Emily nodded, digging into her pocket for her wallet. She handed him a twenty and headed back outside feeling the man's gaze linger on her until the door closed behind her. She shuddered but shook it off, dismissing it as her own paranoia. After all, she was in the middle of nowhere at a creepy gas station. It was natural to feel uneasy. As she filled the tank, she noticed movement in the corner of her eye. Across the road, partially hidden in the trees, was a dilapidated old barn. Something about it caught her attention. Maybe it was the way the light of the setting sun filtered through the slats in the walls, or the faint sound of what could have been music drifting from its direction. It was almost hypnotic. The pump clicked off, snapping her out of her trance. She capped the tank and quickly got back into her car, suddenly eager to leave. She was just about to pull out when she noticed something odd. There was a large, black truck parked around the side of the station that she hadn't noticed before. It wasn't there when she'd arrived. Her heart began to race as she remembered the man inside, his strange, unsettling demeanor. Was someone else here now? Trying to shake off the fear creeping up her spine, Emily pulled back onto the road. She kept glancing in her rearview mirror, half expecting to see the truck following her but the road behind her remained empty. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the road ahead grew darker, the trees closing in on both sides. Emily's sense of unease deepened. The road felt endless, winding through the woods with no sign of civilization. Her headlights sliced through the darkness, but they only seemed to make the shadows deeper, more oppressive. Then, just as she rounded a sharp curve, she saw them, headlights in the distance behind her. Her heart skipped a beat. The truck. It had to be the same one from the station. Emily tried to calm herself. Maybe it was just another traveler, someone else who had taken this route to avoid the interstate. But as the minutes passed, the headlights grew closer and she realized the truck was gaining on her, fast. Panic set in. She pressed down on the accelerator, but the road was narrow, 
winding through the thick woods with no shoulder to pull off on. The truck's headlights loomed larger and larger in her mirror until they were blinding, filling her car with harsh white light. Then, without warning, the truck's horn blared, a deep, angry sound that rattled her to the core. The driver was right on her bumper now, so close that she could make out the outline of the massive grille in her rearview mirror. She could see the silhouette of the driver's head through the windshield, but no features, just a dark, ominous shape. Terrified, Emily pushed the gas pedal to the floor. Her car sped up, but the truck stayed right behind her, matching her speed. It was as if the driver was toying with her, pushing her to go faster on the treacherous road. Suddenly, the truck swerved into the other lane, pulling up alongside her. Emily glanced to her right and saw the driver for the first time. He was a man, but his face was obscured by shadows, a wide-brimmed hat hiding his features. He turned to look at her, and though she couldn't see his eyes, she felt his gaze pierce through her, cold and malevolent. In a flash, the truck swerved toward her, forcing her to yank the wheel to the left to avoid a collision. Her car skidded, tires screeching as it veered dangerously close to the edge of the road. She barely managed to regain control, her heart pounding so hard she thought it might burst. The truck fell back again, but it didn't retreat. Instead, it stayed just behind her, its headlights blazing like twin orbs of malice. Emily knew she couldn't keep this up much longer. The road was too dangerous to drive at these speeds, and if the truck didn't run her off the road, she might crash on her own. She needed to find a way out. Up ahead, she saw a turnoff, a narrow dirt road that branched off from the highway and disappeared into the trees. Without thinking, she swerved onto it, hoping to lose the truck in the darkness. The road was rough, the car bouncing over rocks and potholes as she sped down it. The headlights of the truck faded behind her, and for a brief, fleeting moment, she thought she might have escaped, but then she saw them, headlights cutting through the trees ahead, coming from the opposite direction. The truck had somehow gotten in front of her, blocking her escape. She slammed on the brakes, skidding to a halt just as the truck pulled across the road, cutting off any chance of getting past. Emily was trapped. The road behind her was too narrow to turn around, and the trees on either side were too dense to drive through. The truck's driver got out. He was tall, his figure looming in the darkness, and he began walking slowly toward her car. Emily's breath caught in her throat. She fumbled for her phone, but there was no signal. She was completely cut off. The man reached her car and stood beside the driver's side window, staring down at her. She couldn't see his face, just the outline of his hat and the faint glint of his eyes in the dark. He didn't say a word didn't move to open the door. He just stood there, watching her, as if waiting for something. Emily's mind raced. She couldn't just sit here, waiting for whatever horrible thing was going to happen. She had to do something, anything. She threw the car into reverse, slamming the gas pedal to the floor. The tires spun for a moment before catching, and the car shot backward down the road. The man didn't follow, but she knew he wasn't done with her. She reversed down the road until she found a small clearing just big enough to turn around. With the car now facing the other direction, she sped back the way she had come, praying she could get back to the highway and find help. But as she neared the main road, she saw something that made her blood run cold. The black truck was parked at the intersection, its headlights off, waiting for her. In a panic, she turned the wheel sharply, swerving off the dirt road and into the trees. Branches scratched at the sides of her car, the underbrush scraping against the undercarriage as she plunged deeper into the forest. She had no idea where she was going, she just knew she had to get away. The car bounced and jolted as it tore through the undergrowth, but she didn't dare slow down. Finally, after what felt like hours but was only minutes, she saw a light through the trees. It was faint, but it was there, a distant glow, like a beacon. She drove toward it, hoping against hope that it was a house, a cabin, anything. As she got closer, the light grew brighter, and she realized it was coming from a large, old barn, the same barn she'd seen from the gas station. 
Her heart sank. She'd somehow gone in a circle, right back to where she'd started. The truck had herded her here, driving her into a trap. The barn doors were open, light spilling out into the clearing. She could see movement inside, dark shapes shifting in the dim light. Desperate and with no other options, Emily drove into the barn, the tires kicking up dust as she skidded to a stop. She killed the engine and sat in the darkness, her breath coming in ragged gasps. There was no sound except for the ticking of the cooling engine and the distant hum of cicadas in the woods. Then she saw them, figures emerging from the shadows, moving toward her car. They were dressed in dark clothes, their faces hidden by hoods or masks. They surrounded the car, silent and menacing. Emily's hand went to the door handle, but she froze. She knew there was no point in running. They had her. The door to the barn creaked shut behind her, and the last sliver of light vanished, plunging the barn into total darkness. Emily closed her eyes, gripping the steering wheel so tightly her knuckles turned white. In the darkness she heard the sound of footsteps approaching, slow and deliberate. Then a voice, low and cold, whispered through the darkness. Welcome home.